Shout out to Dacia and Alicia for requesting this video. I gotta talk about Kirk Franklin's Father's Day, his story about being adopted as a child and knowing who his mother was but being abandoned and also never knowing who his father was. Until now. When I tell you I had no clue what I was walking into by clicking on that documentary, but it was 35 minutes of tears, anger, betrayal, and reconciliation. Kirk Franklin is 53 years old and for years, he had negative feelings towards the wrong man, thinking that man abandoned him. That's because his own biological mama had him believing a lie for decades. And even when she was confronted with the truth, not once but twice, with receipts and undeniable proof, this woman still refused to tell the truth. Instead, she continued to lie to Kirk in his face, and when he hit her with the truth, she tried to use tears and emotions to manipulate him again. When I saw his story, I thought about Tupac and how his mama lied to him as well. It's the same thing. Tupac didn't know the truth for 23 years. And Kirk Franklin, he had to wait 53 years to discover the truth. Take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates. Kirk Franklin is opening up about his upbringing. He's from Fort Worth, Texas, dropped off at age four at a distant relative's house who adopted him and raised him. At that time, the older woman was 64 years old and she had no children. He was always alone and went through a lot of pain from being abandoned. He grew up with a little resentment towards a father he didn't know and wondered why his mother, who he would see two or three times a year, why she didn't want him. Kirk admitted that made him very insecure and he didn't have a place to belong. As a child, he played the piano and his adopted mom would scrape up coins to get him in piano lessons. Of course, he became this very successful gospel producer, songwriter, and artist. Though all the money and Grammys in the world could never heal his heart from abandonment issues and trauma. But in 2023, while working in the studio with one of his singers, a woman that he's known since she was a kid, she told him about his biological mom's sister's funeral. That would be his biological auntie. At this funeral, a man was there. The man said he used to date Deborah, that's Kurt's biological mom, that he hadn't seen in 23 years. That's when everybody in the family and friends told the man that he had the same nose as Kirk Franklin, and everyone around town between these families started whispering about this man, Mr. Rick, possibly being Kirk's father. Kirk's biological mom, the news got around to her too, so she called him up and left voicemails, saying that she heard about the rumors and for him to call her if he wanted to talk about it. She told him that she would never lie to him. First saved message. If you would like to talk to me about the rumor that is floating around out there, call back. Just remember, as I told you once, I will not lie to you about anything. End of message. Delete. Mr. Rick decided to swab himself and voluntarily gave it to Kirk Singer. He said that he could do whatever he needed to do with it. So Kirk sent the swabs off for testing and also provided his own DNA. Then the DNA test results came back and Kirk was visibly upset. He found out that Mr. Rick was indeed his father. Yes, he's your father. angry at first and felt really bad at the same time because the guy that his mom told him was his father that man died some years ago from cancer and they connected right before he passed away Kirk had negative feelings towards that man 
because he thought that he abandoned him for years, but he forgave him. And with that man withering away from cancer, he passed away thinking that he had a son that was upset with him for not being there for him. Kirk expressed to him everything and he told him exactly what he thought. So now after this DNA test, Kirk found out that he had that energy with the guy who didn't deserve it because that guy really wasn't his father. He was the man that his mom pinned it on with no proof. So Kirk met up with his biological father. He pulled up to Mr. Rick's house to share the results with him. He lives in a decent middle-class neighborhood, but Kirk did not want to get out of the car and go in the house because he couldn't believe that this man lived adjacent to another house that his son used to hang out at when he was younger. The neighborhood was also right down the street from his recording studio. It was all shocking to him all these years and his real father was right down the street. Eventually he got out of the car, he walked into the house and shared the results with Mr. Rick. Mr. Rick said that he didn't hear any rumors about Deborah being pregnant back then. He had no clue that he had a 53 year old son, it was shocking. And in that moment you could see both men very upset over this. And of course, Kirk was still processing that this man was his father and not the other man. He's an executive in behavioral health care and a top counselor in Texas specializing in addiction and mental health. So after the meeting with his biological dad, Kirk already had a meeting scheduled with his mom at her sister's house. He didn't want anybody to get on the phone and be able to call and tell other people what happened. So he wanted that meeting to be the same day. When he got there, his aunt Sandra, who's very aggressive, pushy, and disrespectful to Kirk, she told him to get his A out of the car. Kirk was asking if Deborah, his bio mom, was there, and she said no. He also wanted her and his bio mom to sign the release form first to appear on camera so they couldn't change their minds after he told them the results on camera. But Sandra, the auntie, she was trying to ignore what he was saying and was telling him to get his A out of the car. Kirk insisted that he was going to wait in the car until Deborah got there and both of them signed the papers. Then when he finally got his auntie to get away, he was like, look at how she's talking to me like I'm a 10 year old boy. He's 53 years old, but his mama's sister is talking to him like he's in the fifth grade. So yeah, he did not want to be in the room with her or deal with her energy. So he waited for Deborah to get there first. So finally, Deborah, she got there. All the paperwork was signed. That's when Kirk went inside the house. He greeted her, hadn't seen this woman in 23 years, and he told her the results that Rick was his father. So you would think that she would be apologetic. Instead, she outright denied it. Yes, his mother refused to accept the results and she requested another test. So Kirk ended up paying for a second test and arranged everything. And guess what? The second test confirmed the results of the first test. He was 99.9% .9 the father. Mr. Rick told Kirk in front of Deborah that he would be there for him and he can contact him whenever he wanted to and just move at his own pace as far as them building a relationship. Kirk was expecting an apology. He expected Deborah to acknowledge the truth and once again, she refused to accept the results. She said the test was wrong. Then had the nerve to ask if her denial would put a wedge between them. And Kirk said yes. Kirk said, if you can't give me this, no hug, no word of encouragement, no sugar, no joke, nothing can substitute. He was stern with Deborah. Basically, he's like, you're not going to pep talk me, hug or kiss me out of this. Nothing is going to substitute the truth, your acknowledgement of the truth, your repentance, your apology and regret for lying for all of these years. So Deborah did what lying conniving women like her do who don't want to face the truth or be held accountable for what they've done. She started crying and acting like she was the victim when she's been the one lying to her son and even with the truth right in her face two times over, she's still lying. Basically, Kirk was like, if you can't tell the truth, I'm not going to have a relationship with you. So his OG city girl mama and her sister walked out of there together. Kirk went back to not talking to her. He's been talking to Mr. Rick, who's also offered to help his oldest grandson, Kirk's son, the one he's been having problems with. They also reconciled on this documentary and apologized to each other after not seeing each other for two years since that whole blow up when Kirk cursed him out for talking to him crazy and putting it out there on social media. But now they reconnected and they're working on their relationship. 
Now, the problem with Kirk's mom is that she was never really held accountable for anything. She kept coming around Kirk two to three times a year when he was younger because she didn't want to be responsible for him, but she wanted him to remember that she was his mother. You know, she was more concerned with living her own life and doing whatever she wanted. And at any time, she could have fixed this, at least told him the truth, gave his father a chance to be a father. But she didn't do that. And not only did she deny him that relationship, she lied about who the father was. She made a man dying of cancer believe that he was a bad person all these years for not being in what he thought was his son's life. Then she destroyed Kirk, who had to deal with all of this and prevented him from having a relationship with his real father. And what's really sad is how this woman is still in denial. She refused to accept accountability for her own actions, for her lies, and even started crying to try to guilt Kirk into allowing her to get away with it. Like how hard is it to apologize to say that she was sorry for lying if she's this stubborn at this old age? I can only imagine how she was before when she was younger. And when she first found out that everybody was talking about Mr. Rick being his father, she called him to run interference then, talking about she would never lie to him and then look what she's doing. Then her and her disrespectful sister, thinking they deserve honor and respect, after all the lies, secrets, and disrespect that they gave to him. This is how selfish this woman was. She fought to protect herself the whole time, and now she's gonna take this attitude and denial to the grave. I'll leave a link for you to check out the documentary below, and I have to warn you, it's heartbreaking. Special thank you to Felicia. I appreciate you, Felicia, for all of your support, as well as Rondre, Peyton, and Nicholas. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well, Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.